Hello and welcome back to another lecture. This is a follow up video to this video I did on how to create an application load balancer using CloudFormation. Someone asked, How do you add EC2 instances to the target group of the application load balancer? And in this video, I'll show you how to do that. To start, the first thing I want you to do is open your template for the application load balancer. I've opened my template and it is right here. Another thing I did is in the management console, I have created my stacks. And as you can see in my CloudFormation management console, I have created my VPC stack and my gateway stack. And once we are done with this template, we are just going to create our application load balancer stack. So I'll minimize this for now. To add an EC2 instance to the target group of your application load balancer, first you have to create that EC2 instance then you can now add it to your target group to create our ec2 instance that we are going to add to the target group i have created a reference template for you and you can download it in the description in this reference template that i call ec2 reference.yaml i have created the perimeter and the resource so under the perimeter the first perimeter is our instance type and this will allow us to select our instance type i have add some options there T1 micro, T2 nano, and T2 micro. The next perimeter will allow us to select a key pair in the region where we are creating our stack. So in whatever region where you are creating your stack, make sure you already have a key pair created in that region. And this perimeter will allow you to select that key pair. And the third perimeter will allow us to enter the ID of our AMI. These are the three perimeters we are going to use to create our EC2 resource. And under the resource section, I have the EC2 resource. And first, you can see I've given it a logical name and I call it EC2 instance 1. And under the property, the first property is our instance type. So we are going to reference the perimeter we created for it up here. The second property is our subnet ID. And remember our subnet is in our VPC stack. So we use the import value intrinsic function to import that value into this template. The next property is our security group. Again, our security group is in our VPC stack. And we are also using the import value intrinsic function to import that security group into this template. The next property is our key pair. And we are going to reference the perimeter we created for it up here. And next we have our image ID. And again, we are going to reference the perimeter we created for it up here. For the next property, we have our tags and we gave it a key name and the value we call it EC2 private subnet one. And another thing I want to mention is for this EC2 instance, we are putting it in the private subnet one. This is the name we use to export our private subnet one. And for the last property, which is optional, I have the user data. So the user data will allow us to run our bash script. So you can see this is how you enter it. We have the intrinsic function base 64 and sub. And down here, I have my bin bash. I'm changing to root user. Then I'm updating my EC2 instance. Then I'm going to install the Apache web server and this command is going to create an index.html file and put the value healthy in that file. And I'm going to start the Apache web server. So this is just some simple command that we are going to use to turn our EC2 instance into a web server. The reason why I've included this command is because if you don't turn your EC2 instance into a web server, the target group is going to show up as unhealthy. So because we want to test it, make sure everything is working. That's why I include this property. But if you don't want to turn your EC2 instance into a web server, you can just delete this property. Next, let's paste these parameters and resource in our application load balancer template. So I'm just going to move this here. The first one I'm going to select is the parameters. So make sure you select the parameters, including the spaces. I'm going to right click, copy it. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to dock this here. So again, make sure you copy all this. 
And I'm going to right click, copy it, and come to my application load balancer template. And under the perimeter section, press enter, press enter again, and come back all the way to the beginning. Make sure your cursor is at the beginning there. Right click and paste it there. So we have added three new perimeters and it should be the instance type, key name, and Amazon image ID. So another thing we can do is we can create another label up here so we can organize these perimeters in that label. To do that, all you can do is copy this. I'm going to copy this, press enter, and come all the way to the beginning and paste it there. And all we can do is just change this value. So for the default, we can call it EC2 parameters. And under the parameters, we are going to add our instance type, key name, and Amazon image ID parameters under it. So I'll delete this. The first one I want to add is my image ID. So I'll type the Amazon image ID first, because I want that one to be at the top. Then the next one I'm going to add is the instance type. So instance type, I'm going to type that. And the third one is my key name. So all I did is the new perimeters that I just added, I added a label for them. So to organize them in that label, the next thing we are going to do now is come to the resource section. So go all the way down at the resource section down here, press enter. And let's go back to our EC2 reference template. And this time, copy all this resource. I'm going to copy everything. Make sure you don't copy the resources, just the EC2 resource. And I'm going to come back here. And down here, make sure you are at the beginning and paste it there. And I'm going to scroll down and make sure there's a space between this EC2 instance and the output. So I'm just going to press enter. And that's pretty much what we need to do to add this resource. Instead of creating one EC2 instance, let's create two EC2 instance in each of the private subnet we have. So I'm just going to create another EC2 instance. To do that, I'll just copy this, copy this resource and come down here, press enter, press enter again, come all the way to the beginning and paste it there. And now all I have to do is first, I'm going to change the logical ID. I'll call this EC2 instance 2. And under the properties, the instance type is fine. The subnet ID, we are going to just change this to 2. And remember, we export the value for our private subnet 2 as the VPC name, private subnet 2. So that's why I'm changing this to 2. All these values will stay the same. But for our tag, let's call it EC2 private subnet2. And that is all we need to change here to add a second instance. So now this template will launch two EC2 instance, one in the private subnet1 and the other in the private subnet2. The last thing we need to do to complete this template is we need to add these two EC2 instances to our application load balancers target group. To do that, I'm going to go up and right here, we have our application load balancer target group. So under the properties for the target group, we are going to add a property here that allow us to enter those EC2 instance as our targets. To show you where to get that information, I'm just going to copy this type. Anytime you are trying to get an information on a resource type, what you can do is copy that resource type. So I'll copy it. And I'm going to open Google. I'll open a new tab and I'm going to paste that resource type in there. Press enter. And you can see under my results, you can see it here. I'll select it. And it is going to take you to the exact location of the syntax in the documentation. So I'll scroll down to the YAML. Under the YAML format, you can see all the properties we can use to create our target groups. The property we need to add our targets 
is this target property here and if you select it it will give you more information right you can see it here so all we need to do is we need to add another properties name target and under that target we are going to have a list so if i select this target description and for our list we can enter the id of our ec2 instance and the port we don't need to specify the availability zone so that is how you enter it i'm going to leave this documentation link in the description so let's go back to our template and here what we need to do is we can come down here under protocol press enter and there let's enter targets so like that make sure you spell it right so enter targets like that then we are going to press enter then next we need to specify our list so we'll put that dash and the first one we are going to enter is the id and you are going to enter it like this remember it is case sensitive so it is a capital i and lowercase d then press space and this id means the instance id of your ec2 instance so for this first id we are going to reference our ec2 instance one resource we create down here so i'm just going to use the ref function Then once you have referenced your instance, press enter and press tab. Make sure you are lined up under this ID. The next thing we need to specify is the port. I'm going to type port in there. Make sure it is a capital P. Then for the port, it is going to be port 80. So type 80 in there. So that is how we add the first EC2 instance to the target group. Let's add the second EC2 instance to the target group. Again, all I can just do is just copy this. I'll copy this, right? And I'll come down and I'll come all the way to the beginning and just paste it there. So now you should have this. For your second EC2 instance ID, make sure you change this to two. I'm going to change that to two and the port is port 80. We have now add our EC2 instances to this target group. Another property we can add is a target type. So press enter and come all the way to this part where you are lined up under the target. Then in there, you can type target type. And again, it is case sensitive. Make sure it is a capital T and capital T there then for our target type it is going to be an instance so we enter instance here and what this target type means is that we are using the ec2 instance id as our target type and that's all we need to do for this template once you've added those two ec2 instance to your target group just come all the way up and let's save this template i'm going to save it and once you've saved it I'm going to open the CloudFormation console and I'll go to my CloudFormation stack and I'm going to create my application load balancer stack. I'll select create stack with new resources, upload template file, choose my file and I'm going to select my application load balancer template here and open it. Press next and we are going to give it our stack name. Remember our stack name we'll just call it alb and we did this in the last lecture so make sure you reference the application load balancer lecture because we are also adding an https listener we have to add the arn of our amazon certificate so watch the last lecture we did it in that lecture so what i'm going to do is just right click open in a new tab i'm going to go to certificate manager you can either type it up here i have it here i'll select it and this is my domain name i'll select that drop down come here copy my arn and i'm going to come back to my stack and i'm going to paste it there for the export vpc stack name our vpc stack we called it vpc and under the ec2 perimeter 
we need to enter our image ID here. I want to use the Amazon Linux 2 image. I'm going to right click again. I'm going to select EC2. I'm going to launch a new instance. And you can see the Amazon Linux 2 AMI here. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this ID. Copy that. And let's come back to our CloudFormation stack. And let's paste it there. And on that key name, select in there. And you will see a key pair in that region where you are creating your stack. So currently I'm creating my stack in the Northern Virginia region. And I have a key pair in this region and you can see it here. I'm just going to select it. So if you click in here and you can see a key pair there, that means you don't have a key pair in that region. So first you have to go and create that key pair and you'll be able to select the key pair here. I'm going to select next, scroll down, select next and scroll down and select create stack. It is now creating my application load balancer stack. I'm going to click refresh. And you can see it is creating my two EC2 instances. I'm going to click refresh. And if you go to the management console, you will see that it is creating two EC2 instances. I'm going to select my EC2 here and I'm just going to back out. And I'm going to select my running instances. And you can see it is creating two EC2 instances in private subnet one and private subnet two. So if I select them to check the information, you can see it is in my VPC and it is in the private subnet too. What about this one? In my VPC and it is in the private subnet one. So the next thing we need to do now is let's go back to CloudFormation. I'm going to refresh and it has finished creating my stack. So let's go back to the EC2 console. I'm going to scroll down on the left side and let's select target groups. You can see our target group here. I'm going to select it. And you can see that we have two EC2 instances as our target. And those EC2 instances are healthy. You can see them here under status healthy. Now let's go to our application load balancer. I'll select load balancers. And if we copy the DNS name of our application load balancer, I'm going to open a new tab and I'll paste it in there. Press enter. And it should give you this warning sign saying connection is not private. That is because we already created an HTTPS listener, but we haven't created a record set to connect it to that. Just ignore this and just click advance. And you will see here, proceed to your application load balancer's DNS name. Select it. And you can see the healthy HTML file we created. You can see this healthy here. So that means that your EC2 instance is working properly. It is healthy and it is in the target group. This is how you create EC2 instances and add them to the target group. Thank you guys. So if you want to delete your stack now, you can just select your application load balancer stack and select delete and select delete stack. And it is going to delete your application load balancer stack. And once you are done deleting that, you can delete your NAT gateway stack. Then once you've deleted your NAT gateway stack, you can delete your VPC stack. If you are new to AWS and you want to create some project in AWS to improve your knowledge, I've created some course for you on Udemy. I'm going to leave a link to this course in the description and in the order that you should take them. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.